We are introduced to several notable and powerful men in His Grace the Duke. The fifth episode of The Gilded Age Season 2, in New York, intrepid journalists Peggy Scott and T. Thomas Fortune journeyed to Tuskegee to meet real-life groundbreaker Booker T. Washington. While Bertha Russell, Carrie Coon, finds herself swooning over the fictional Duke of Buckingham, Ben Lamb, in addition to putting Peggy in danger of encountering the more extreme forms of racism that are pervasive in the South, the trip enables her to understand how Black Americans have historically worked to uplift the community despite this horrifying opposition. Once more, The Gilded Age shows modern audiences what life was like 150 years ago by fusing fact and fiction. T. Thomas Fortune and Peggy Scott have traveled all the way south of the Mason-Dixon line in order to report on the work being done in the South by Booker T. Washington's Tuskegee Institute. In His Grace the Duke, the fourth episode of Season 2 of The Gilded Age, they arrive at Tuskegee, stay the night at the historic Oaks home of Mr. and Mrs. Washington, and rise early the following day to conduct student interviews, yet perhaps not the ones that contemporary audiences might anticipate. The Tuskegee Institute taught pupils practical skills like sewing and farming in place of academic subjects like accounting and the classics. Executive producer and writer Sanja Warfield of the Gilded Age said to Decider, well, you know, it was like a farming institute. The fact that they were building the school and learning at the same time is what we found so fascinating, and we included this in the performance. Therefore, everything they did was sensible. Thus, as you may imagine, they would sow the soil, milk the cows, and examine the fertilizer under a microscope. They are studying agriculture, and everything has a function. T. Thomas Fortune and Peggy Scott will see the grand inauguration of the dorm the students constructed themselves in next week's episode of The Gilded Age which touches on another point Warfield was happy the show addressed. I just thought that was incredible because I moved straight into the dorm when I went to college. It wasn't built by me, she claimed. It turns out that the dormitory didn't even need to be built in its entirety by the Gilded Age. In order to bring Tuskegee, Alabama to life, the show didn't even need to travel south. All they had to do was use the back lot, which is the show's literal backyard. We consider ourselves quite lucky that the replica of Old Bethpage Village is located directly next door to our backlot, which is located in Bethpage, Long Island. The reason they call it recreation is that the hamlet is made up of additional structures that were assembled from other historic places. Shaw clarified that the location was not initially a town before disclosing that he had previously utilized it for the beloved Dickinson on Apple TV+. Therefore, it was practically there. We had some work to do with the new dormitory building and that kind of stuff. We built the new dormitory building space and then CG extended it farther, but overall, it was there. Another example of Shaw's serendipity. He was able to locate a residence in Old Bethpage that bore a striking resemblance to Oaks, the famous home of Booker T. Washington. You know the layout functioned fairly well. That was just a gift, Ben Shaw remarked. We were aware for a few years that we lived next door to that location but we were unaware that it would be relevant to us. On July 4, 1881, the True Tuskegee Institute was established as a result of a deal reached by local black leader Lewis Adams and white politician Delia Foster, a former Confederate commander. If Adams could persuade the predominantly black electorate to support him, Foster would establish the school, which would be dedicated to the improvement of black citizens. It appears that George Campbell, a local former slave owner, and Adams had the idea for the school. It was Campbell who hired Booker T. Washington to be the principal of the institution. Washington was able to draw in affluent northern donors with the aid of his wife Olivia, which made it possible to build the dorm. Currently known as Tuskegee University or TU, the institution is notoriously linked to the Tuskegee Cephalus experiment, despite having a long and distinguished history of graduating scholars and even military heroes like the Tuskegee Airmen of World War II. Between 1932 and 1972, Low-income black males were tricked into thinking they were getting medical care, when in reality, they were being fooled into contracting syphilis and being left untreated as part of an experiment to track the terrible disease's natural course. Currently, Tuskegee University has over 3,000 students enrolled. 2020 saw Mackenzie Scott give Tuskegee $20 million, the largest ever charity donation in the school's history.